We are back on the old GPH 24 here, 14 sear. Change the evaporator coil out. I kind of rigged up my recovery in a different sort of manner. Uh, a little experiment I'm doing to see if I can use my vacuum hoses to increase the recovery time because my machine's pretty old. It's pretty slow. So if I can increase it a little bit, that'd be nice as far as speed. I might go ahead and take the unit apart, making sure the power's off. I check into the contactor here, the incoming side of the contactor. Uh, then I can take everything apart, get the top off, and start uh, getting ready to take the old evaporator out. When you change out a Goodman evaporator coil, typically you take the whole top off. I mean, you have to. Uh, since it's one piece, and you have to take the fan and separate it from the unit. Inside the evaporator panel here, you'll see three disconnects. That is for your fan lead, so you can separate those so you can take the top off. So I guess that was their remedy for having a one-piece top. So I'll disconnect those and you can sort of just lay it back over and do your work that way. Well, this evaporator coil is a little different than the last one we did. It actually has screws them out from the outside in. The great intellects who thought of that, I don't know. Because, you know, this is, that side's going to be under a hood probably 50% of the time. Uh, if it's a rooftop, it's fine, but you can't even use this one for rooftop anyway, so it doesn't make sense 100% of the time. I stand correct. So you have to take the hood off to get those screws out, pain in the ass. And then you'll have three screws, three or four, down the line here. And you have to take those out, and you have to go inside of the compressor compartment and take three or four out down the inside, and then it will slide out. This one will probably slide a little bit better than the last one just because it doesn't have that rail in the back. But I'll trade the rail for screws if you don't have to take the foot off to reach. So we're going to let the uh, let the, uh, uh, the pump finish up here, or should I say recovery, finish up. And then we'll move on and take this thing out and set a new one in there, which is actually aluminum. So that's kind of wow, look at the beautiful new aluminum coil. The connections are so close down here. I'll make them so easily. But wait, what is this? This looks like it's built for some other unit. So I'm going to have uh, to remodel this and turn it down into this one. Just kind of strange. And then this coil seems to be built for a rail on the back, which isn't there. It's the right coil. And I've seen a lot of styles of these coils, and they do have rails on the back. But this particular unit screwed in through the back. So you know, this shit's about to be re-engineered. I have redone the suction exit for the evaporator into the reversing valve slash hot gas for heating line. Uh, we engineered it, brought it up to spec here. And there's our liquid line. I've got the pieces together that to braze it on and go up into the <coughs> distributor. Orifice. Orifice that came with the uh, coil is not the right size for this unit so I have the proper orifice I say the old one I always check and make sure you got the right orifice whenever you're changing the evaporators and things like that uh, if they use that sort of uh, meter device I'm gonna go ahead and braze this and fit this together and then I can braze the old uh, suction liner for you our connections are made now see our track back to the reversing valve is good to go we have our connection here up to the distributor to the evaporator so we've made the best of our slightly misaligned good amount of truck coil. All right, I put 25 pounds of pressure on it. What I do is I just put just a few pounds on it, and if I have some sort of major leak, like I just forgot to braze the bottom of something, it'll show up real fast so I don't waste nitrogen. I'm gonna go ahead and up it a little bit. See, nitrogen will go in there, and I'll go up to around 100 pounds now and see if it leaks. And uh, if I don't hear anything at 100 pounds, they're probably pretty good to go. Then I'll move it up to like 125 or 150 and let it sit for a few minutes just to make sure. Okay, I got the vacuum pump on the system. We're down to 278 microns while the pump is running. We'll let it go for a little bit longer because, you know, as soon as you blank it off, it's going to jump up anyway. So let it roll for a while. Uh, everything's good to go. I got the unit button backed up except for the service panel down the end. And right here where we uh, have access to the components we were working on. Got the testos out there ready for duty here in just a minute. So I'll give it about five or ten more minutes and blank it off and see what we got, and then we'll move on to charging. I'm about to start charging the unit, so I need to place my pipe clamps somewhere. 
So I have this one entering the accumulator on the way back to the compressor for superheat. And for line measurement, temperature measurement. And I have one heading into the dryer for subcooling. And that's heading to the evaporator. And that'll actually work both ways uh, to get a, uh, get a subcooling reading. And so will this one here since it's uh, not on the suction line coming back from the evaporator. It's actually on the true suction line heading to the compressor. So and I'll kind of wiggle these out the door and put the door on and kind of... Uh, gently press it up there so I can uh, not bypass air to the fan through here instead of through the outdoor coil. So I'll go ahead and get that put together and we'll start charging the unit. All right, we have it running in air conditioning now. It's around 70 degrees outside. Inside we have a wet bulb of 57. And according to those two measurements, the target superheat is around 11 or 12. So we're a little bit off of that. We're gonna add probably two or three ounce increments and let it run until we get down in the uh, 11 or 12 degree range. All right, we have 16.3 on the superheat. Our target was between 11 and 12, so we're right on the edge of the acceptable area, which is plus or minus five degrees. Uh, I know one thing, whenever I finish here, when I bleed my hoses out, another two or three ounces are gonna go into the machine that are uh, in the hoses from the tank all the way down uh, to the machine itself. So I'm gonna stay right here and go ahead and call it good, as, uh, good to go because I know we're going to be a couple more degrees lower once it's all said and done. And we're actually a little bit closer to range. You see we're 15.3 now. So, another successful evaporator change out. And I will see you guys on the next one.